All right, everybody, this is Ross the Fig Boss. Today we are talking about unwrapping our fig trees that we protected during this winter time. And so if you guys have not been familiar with this whole process and you're thinking about some winter protection for next season, um, I would highly recommend you guys go back, watch the video that we did on wrapping this. We talked about all the benefits, talking about how to do this, talking about the temperature tolerance of fig trees. But also, we, you can go back on my blog, figboss.com, in the description of the video, you'll see an extremely detailed write-up. And that's really what I've been focusing on lately, guys. For those of you who've been wondering where I am and haven't been making as many videos, go to the blog, figboss.com, put your email in there, subscribe to the Figboss newsletter. Every month, I'm going to send you guys some really great fig-related content. And of course, things like this, tips and tricks, right? And so today though, we're not wrapping the fig tree. It's the springtime. Um, it's the middle of February here in the Philadelphia area. And now we're unwrapping them. And it's equally as important to wrap them as it is to unwrap them. And so today we're gonna to talk about when to wrap them or when we're unwrapping them, excuse me. Um, we're gonna show you guys the results of all of this. So we're gonna unwrap the tree, see how the tree looks like, and talk a little bit about, finally, how this process went. Uh, are there any things that we could improve for next year that when we wrap this tree again, this Ron de Bordeaux fig variety that we're looking at today, can we make any improvements uh, the next time that we do this so that you guys, and not just me, but you guys can also have a better job wrapping your fig tree as well. So, one of the things I think that's really important to consider here, guys, is the temperature tolerance of our fig trees. And so we have a hundred or more fig trees here that I've planted in the ground. And you can see over the years and how we've protected them and how that's evolved. And because we have so many trees, we have to get very creative. But if we have a fig tree like the Ron de Bordeaux over here that we're looking at today, this is not a very hardy fig. I think it is hardy to about five degrees Fahrenheit. But for those of us that are in a 7A, you're in a 6B, and you wanna grow fig trees in the ground, you almost have to wrap your fig tree if it's not very hardy. And so some of the, the varieties here in 7A can actually withstand zero degrees Fahrenheit. And you see the trees that we just looked at, some of them are gonna survive this winter with no problems. Although, even though we're in 7A, we don't always get down to zero degrees Fahrenheit every year. So this year we only got down to eight and we also got down to 10. Now I'm looking ahead in the forecast and I'm thinking to myself, well, you know, it's a really early spring. We've had a very mild winter in general. We're getting an early spring like we have been the last few years as well. And so if I leave this wrapping on here too long, it gets too warm in here. And so all the heat gets trapped in here. That's the idea of it, right? In the wintertime to have the heat rise from the bottom from the earth and get trapped in this. Uh, maybe it warms up during the day and we wanna trap all that heat in there. So that's why we wrap this, that's why we wrap it really tight. And that's also why I make it airtight on the bottom where you see these wood chips. And so some of the fig trees, as I mentioned, will survive, some of them will not. And that's why it's important to wrap these trees if you're in a 7A if you're in a 6B, because zero degrees is about the limit. Zero degrees Fahrenheit is about the limit for almost all fig trees. And so if you don't have a variety like Hardy Chicago, this is a Ron de Bordeaux, which is hardy to about five, well then I need to give this tree some sort of protection. So if it does get down to zero, this tree won't die. Instead, this will be kept at about five where it's actually rated for its hardiness. And so that's why we did this. Now let's, um. Let's unwrap this thing, now that I've given you guys a little bit of background, and we'll show you guys the results. One of the things, as I'm unwrapping this, we'll talk about some of the things we're gonna do differently. But the first night we had a really severe cold, Remember, you guys might remember this in 2000, um, I think at this point it was 2022, I don't know what month it was, but the middle of the country saw a crazy cyclone and, and terrible cold that you guys even got down below zero. Um, here in the Northeast, we got kind of the edges of that and there was a lot of uh, blizzard, there was a big blizzard that hit the middle of the country. And so we had very odd temperatures at that time that we had an eight degree Fahrenheit low, which was in, in fig terms, that's actually not that bad. Um, but it was 
the duration of it was for the whole, for like 10 hours. So at night, it stayed for eight degrees Fahrenheit for 10 hours straight. The following day, it didn't get back up above uh, 20. So it was a very strange thing. I've never seen anything like that. Um, I've been curious to find out because it's not just important about the severity of the cold, right? The actual winter low, but what else is important is we have to uh, consider the duration of this winter low. So this fig tree, I'm unwrapping this, looks, this looks like nothing ever happened to it. I'm gonna be honest, just first glance, I'll get you guys in here in a second, but uh, this absolutely works. And so here's another thing. Why are we unwrapping it today? As I said, we're getting an early spring. It is the middle of February. If it gets too warm in here, this tree is going to mold, actually. Um, so all that heat's going to get trapped in here, and it's going to create a very unusual environment. If moisture's trapped in here as well, it's going to just promote mold. And so that's the key here is getting this thing off actually rather early and putting it on rather late. So people always struggle with this. This is the number one thing. They wrap them too soon. And then when you unwrap them, people unwrap them and say, oh my God, my fig tree is dead. Why is it dead? Because all that heat was trapped in there for too long. So now that we're getting days that today is going to be, I think, in the 60s, we just want to make sure we unwrap this. And so here's the Ronde Bordeaux. Basically what I've cut away and then what I've left, wrapped this all together. And you know what? Could have done a better job of getting all the branches together, tying them up here, as you see. But it didn't really matter. A little bit larger of a wrapping that we did totally uh, didn't make a difference whatsoever in terms of the protection of this tree. Because if I show you guys the branches, and look, by the way, as soon as we undo those, that twine that I wrapped everything with, everything just goes back to where it was. And this is a good idea as well. Start staking the branches. Stake the branches away from each other. Get that light penetration in here as soon as you unwrap. You know, this is a job that obviously you could wait a little bit on, but it, it doesn't matter. Getting that sunlight in here is going to be critical, although they do uh, spread out pretty well after you cut that out. But let's look at the, the actual branching itself here at the top. This is where, if there is going to be any damage, this is where it would be. And so I'm not seeing really any of that red coloration that you, you normally would see um, when a fig tree is taking some damage. Now, if I do the scratch test, it's bright green under there. So this worked. Um, this was probably my least hardiest tree on the property, and that's why I wrapped it. Other trees that were not going to survive the winter or I wanted to make sure something would survive, I bent the branches over, covered them with wood chips. So that's why these wood chip piles are existing here. And very soon I'm going to be doing the same thing with these wood chips, removing the wood chips and allowing the branches that are underneath these wood chips to plop back up just like here and no longer be trapped with all that extra heat. It's just too warm for our fig branches to be under here, they're gonna mold, they're gonna rot. Uh, that's a problem, right? If you have, let's say, leaves or straw or wood chips up against the trunks of your trees, that can be bad in times of high moisture and in times of warmer temperatures. So um, just like this, we're gonna do that. And so again, this worked out. And if I show you some comparisons of other trees and other branches, we didn't have a ton of damage but what you will see if you do see damage is red coloration here on the branches. You know, let me zoom in really quickly. I didn't do that. We'll zoom in real quick here on this branch, the Ronde Bordeaux. And so you could see, I mean, that looks like a pristine branch. I could cut this right now and root it with absolutely no problems. Now, if I take you guys over to another tree, I, I really do, I think that this, uh, this Nerino or Moro de Caneva, maybe even this tree here, LSU Tiger, looks a bit weird, but it's hard to say at this point if there is any damage. But here's a, uh, a young Campanieri. Let's look at this and we'll see if there is any red coloration here. 
So at the top, it does feel a bit dry and it does feel uh, pliable actually. So even though looks, looks can be deceiving and if I do the scratch test, it is still bright green there. And so that's what we wanna preserve. That's the whole point of this is to preserve these tips. All these growth tips are extremely critical. The lateral buds, as I've discussed in the past as well, to get these trees to fruit the following year. That's why we protect them. If the cold kills them, if we prune them, it's the same effect. They're gonna respond the following year by growing crazy amounts. And so we're not gonna see the fruit set that we want because of that disruption in the hormones within these trees. So we preserve the tips on um, pretty much all the trees. I don't think it was really a, a bad enough of a cold. The trees that uh, were not protected are already very hardy. And so eight degrees Fahrenheit isn't gonna be a big deal for them. You really need to see something around lower than five. Um, and uh, you know, it, it just goes to show you that this worked out. And the one thing I would change, because there are different methods to this, um, you can create a chicken wire system where you can um, fill in the uh, chicken wire, wrap chicken wire around the whole thing. As you saw, I just had a tarp around it. That was it. You can do chicken wire. You can wrap this whole thing in burlap as I had it wrapped up. Then put a ring of chicken wire around the whole thing. Fill that chicken wire in with leaves and straw and other mulching materials that are insulative or even housing material. You can use housing insulation. You could use blankets at that point. Cover it with anything you can, and then you throw the tarp on top. And the tarp is there to keep the moisture out. Um, as you can see, this is totally dry. There's nothing in here. There's no moisture that was trapped. Uh, it doesn't feel like at all or any way that there was an excess of humidity in here. Um, maybe down here at the base, it looks like there's a little bit of uh, excess moisture on this branch. Um, but other than that, I'm not seeing any faults whatsoever. It's pretty simple. And the one other thing I would recommend for those of you guys who are doing this, use the eye holes in the, um, in the tarp that you use and put the, the twine through the eye holes and get it really, really tight because the more airtight that you get this, the tighter it is, the more heat that you're gonna be able to trap because any excess air that's able to get in there, that's why we put this mulch and all these wood chips around the base to keep any air from getting in underneath or getting in at all <clears throat> so we could trap all the earth's heat and use that tarp as insulation. So that is it there, guys. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon. Check out the blog again, figboss.com. Hit that subscribe button. We'll see you guys for the next video. Take care.